Today, we're getting ready to finally paint this old bedroom. Over the last few weeks, we've been prepping the room, hole filling, sanding, just getting everything ready for paint. Last night, we did the final prep work. The whole floor is covered in brown paper, taped off, because we're gonna be spraying the room. That's why I have my respirator with me, so that I'm not getting oversprayed. I'm gonna be testing out this paint gun that I have that I haven't gotten the chance to use very much. I'm hoping this will give me a nice smooth finish on everything. I'm also gonna be trying out a new uh, paint brand, Mythic Paint. I've always read good things about this company. Now, there's not much in the way of labeling on here, but they say that there is no toxic, it's non-toxic paint, it's supposed to be no cancer causing chemicals in the paint, low VOC. I just thought it'd be good to try out, see how it goes. People say it has really good coverage. So we're gonna start with the primer and then we'll switch to the paint after it dries. It almost feels a little bit unreal. Like I keep thinking, are we really painting today? Yeah. Like after being here for two years. Wow. Does it?
The primer dried overnight. The finish is pretty smooth. Smoother than I expected because when I was spraying it, some of the areas didn't look too smooth. It dried nice. The only problem I'm having is the bleed through where you can see some of that wood stain coming through the primer. You see those brown tones milking through. I'm going to move forward with painting and I think those brown stains are going to stop and that's only because I have experience with our living room ceiling. When I did that ceiling, I put a basic primer on it. It did have some bleed through, but the paint looks good. We're also going to be painting the closet white. Now the room color is going to be different. So we're going to be going with the mythic paint and this color white is actually called coconut milk. So let me prep the sprayer. We are going to spray this coat as well and we'll start spraying. We'll bring it back in when it's done and when we do the wall colors. That's what you guys are waiting for. But check out the room. It is looking really good. A lot brighter, a lot cleaner. We're done with the ceiling and the closet. Those are looking good. While they're drying, we're taking a look at this. This is actually the original closet door that came from her bedroom. Now, when we moved in, this wasn't attached. It was actually on the porch, right? Yeah. But luckily it was still with the house, so that's good. It's not perfect, but we're gonna try to reuse it. It does have some spreading at the top, so we're gonna try to pull these styles back in together and give it a sanding. And then we have to decide what to do with it. We were leaning toward painting it white, but when I see this, it hurts me. I almost wanna just leave it Cabernet style like this. Mm -hmm. The back side looks worse than the front. It's nasty. And this side has no sealant on it. I think that's why it looks so bad. It's almost as if they 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 didn't bother because it was the inside of the closet and they just yeah. That's good. just like the old ones kind of like reinstalled. I honestly was expecting it to have a normal cutout for a door so that's really surprising to find that kind of hardware in here. So we're going to try to fix this part right here. You can see the separation and it's a little bit crooked. We'll, we'll try to drip some glue, some glue in there. Look at that. I think I'll pull it in with the clamp and then screw it. What was saying that? The pot. Oh, the food pot? Yeah. I don't know if we can do it. Look at it, it's coming out. We did it. Let's pry this bad boy off now. Let me start with this and see how it goes. Oh, that's loose. Now this corner of the door is the most problematic. I don't even know what happened here. It must have been, I, it looks like an animal clawed it, but I don't think it did. I think the door just rubbed on something. They had something on the floor 
And whenever they were opening and closing the door, it was probably yeah. catching on it. Because otherwise there would have been scratches. There's no scratches anywhere else on the door. Yeah. Now I did talk about fixing this. We could form some wood putty in here, shape it out, and you'd be like new. But I think we're going to leave it. Ashley wants it. She wants yeah. it there. That kind of is the, the wear over the years, the natural... I like it. It's like character. So we might just leave that as part of the character of the closet door. Okay, mommy. You're too cute. No, you're too cute. Well, your, my nails are all beat up. I can't pick this tape off. This door is going to look brand new when we're done with it. Right? Yeah, I hope. Let's see if we can get all this gunk and... Even just dusting it off makes it look better. Yeah. This thing was filthy. Okay. What is that about? This hole? It, well, it must have been tilted and dumped into it. Look how clean that looks even with a clear finish on it. Yeah. Like. Now I lined this jig up with the original hole in the door, but you can see this doesn't have a bore for the handle set. And realistically we need one. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out. I'll probably run a drill through this side too, even though there's a hole here, just to make sure it's straight and cleaned up. It feels a little bit rough. And then we'll be ready to start staining and finishing this side of the door. if it smells. It smells like grandma's basement. Can I smell it? Good job? Yeah. Okay. I'll be back. Huh? Well, hope that's gonna work. So now is where I get to really experiment with the stain and see A, how closely it matches and if I need to take this down further. As you can see, I'm trying to leave as much of the original finish as I can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rag some stain over these rough spots where the wood is showing through and hope for the best. If it doesn't blend in, then we'll take it to plan B where we try to take down more of the finish and just get it down to the wood. Okay, I just got carried away there. Let's just see how it goes. Yeah. Keep it clean. We just want to make sure it's getting in all the little cracks. We're not looking for a perfect door, Maverick. We're looking for a a fresh looking, uh, a nice looking door, you know? But it's not going to look nice at this here. Well, we're, yeah, yeah. Well, look for mommy, yes. Mommy likes it. Well, this door kind of reminds me of a sucking pallet soap now. Yeah. We don't want to leave strokes on it. I'm trying to get this, you know. Yeah. 
into all the cracks, even into the dust, stain the dust so it blends, blends in. Yeah. As promised, we're back to show you guys the progress. The ceiling is dry and I wanted to show you how it's looking and what we think about it. Check it out, first of all, what this room looks like compared to when we began. It's amazing. I want to show you guys, look at the ceiling is a semi-gloss paint, so you can definitely see the shine. We'll show you bright light and some darkness so you can see that gloss with the window reflection. The finish looks really good. Now, did it bleed through? Yes, it did. But can you see it? No, so I'm not worried about it. It's very subtle, mostly right here around the light. There's a little bit of thinness, but considering where we started, it's looking good and it is dry and it's beautifully smooth. Now I threw a light in here so that you guys could see what a difference it makes without filling all those little holes and knots. And you'll probably say, why didn't you? I don't know. It's a closet, but that was like the bedroom walls were all full of holes just like that. But the finish looks good. Again, we got everything covered in here. And there is a little bit of yellow hue to it. I can see it. You guys probably can't see it. I think that wood does come through slightly. This is only one coat. Why is my hair winging all day? Okay. <laughs> and even though typically you'd want two coat coverage, we're really happy with this. And I think we're sticking with it because we don't like doing more than we really need to do, especially for a little impact. And I don't want to mess up this beautiful finish. It is evenly semi-gloss. It's awesome looking. And I don't want to respray it and maybe end up with blotchiness because I might get a spot not as covered. It's going to be really hard going the gloss on gloss, white on white. And I don't want to ruin the even finish that I managed to get. So instead of pushing my luck, we're just going to leave it and be happy with it because A, we have an old house. We want it to look like an old house and it looks beautiful. Yeah. We don't need perfection. No. It's like a million times better than what it was. Now, the walls, these have a lot more... This is scary. But I think, again, we're going to go forward with the paint and see how it looks. This has sat long enough that we can take the clamp off it at the very least. Oh! <laughs> Since that's kind of weird. Yeah. Mommy wants it. I like it actually. I think it adds some cool character. Yeah. See Just so you guys know what I'm using. Here it is. Plastic wood. Professional wood filler. You have to open it on the bottom? Yep. You it's spilling out? Oops, sorry, sorry. I'm having trouble opening it and I'm trying to show the camera. You keep it upside down so that when you open it, you make a mess. <laughs> Look at it. It's okay. I might be able to just layer this in. We'll just leave it a little thick and I'll sand it away. Now I'm just going to do some of these big holes that I don't want, you know, to struggle with later.
it look okay? Yeah. Last night I came out here and I decided to keep working on this door and I have it now where I'm totally happy with it. The door is looking fantastic. So we're ready to finish it. Now we're kind of multitasking here. We're working on two major projects at once. Refinishing a door, refinishing this room. I want to paint the room today, but I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the room has paper on the floor and the walls aren't finished yet. I'm going to bring the door in there and shellac it. We're going to use basic shellac as a seal coat. And I'm going to try to spray it with my sprayer. I would love to see how shellac sprays. So this is kind of an experiment and uh, taking advantage of the room before we paint. And throw my stack racks on the door. These are going to allow me to keep the door off the floor and do both sides at the same time. But seriously, can you see the door? It is looking beautiful compared to what it was. I can't wait to see it with the finish on it. Now let me do a final uh, blow off. Get all the dust off here. You see all this white coming out of it? Did you see all that? Yeah. The gun was clean. Hold it quick. And look at it all. I think I have to stop. I just keep going. That went a lot worse than I ever imagined it could. I like using shellac. I've used it for a lot of things. I've even done doors in shellac, but I've never sprayed it. I've always brushed it. And my brushing, it doesn't come out great, but it's usually good enough. This, I thought, was going to be at least as good as that, but right now it's looking pretty horrendous. The one thing that really got me is all through this spraying, I kept having white paint splattering out at my work. And I know you're never supposed to wipe up anything, but if those dry in the paint, I'm never going to get them out. So it was kind of like this terrible situation. I can't believe how much residual paint was left in the gun after the full cleanup and wash down procedure that you do. And you even started with a new cup. Yeah, thing. I put a new cup. There's Ashley. So I was really shocked to see those little spurts of white paint coming out and they didn't stop. It wasn't like, oh, there was a little bit in there. It kept going from start to finish. The whole door just kept getting them on it. It's crazy. So. I'm hoping that we worked those out of the system. So we're going to give that a few minutes to dry so we can get it out of here. And hopefully today we can still at least do the wall paint and have that not turn into a disaster. So as we step away from that door project, we just got done prepping this room for paint. So what we did was we taped a border of brown craft paper to the ceiling and taped off the closet. That way we don't have any overspray from the walls. So the room is prepped. I'm going to start doing the paint right now because this masking tape is not holding very well to our semi-gloss ceiling. I don't think I mentioned that, but we did the semi-gloss finish. So I want to get the seat, the walls painted before all of this just falls down on us because that was a lot of work to put up. <laughs> yeah, it was like a workout. Hopefully everything goes smoothly, no more problems, and this room's going to look beautiful and finished in no time. Now I know you guys are excited to see, I hope you are at least, what color that Belle picked out for her bedroom. Some of you guys guessed it right, and it is... Strawberry Milk. It's going to be a very pale, I don't know if pale is the right word, but pink. Very light pink. It's actually very soft and very beautiful. It's going to lighten up this room and it's going to look really cool. Yeah. And do you see a theme going on here? We have coconut milk and strawberry milk. Yeah. You can kind of see where she's going with this. <laughs> so far the painting has been going good with the sprayer. I'm definitely still learning. I'm not a pro at it, but we're getting there. And the Mythic paint, this is our first time using it, and that, it seems like a good paint so far. No problems, it's covering well. 
Now this paint is supposed to be non-toxic, low VOC or zero VOC, I forget, but it's supposed to be a very safe and healthy paint. That's why we chose it and we wanted to try it out. Now with that said, you still see me wearing my respirator and some people might wonder why I'm wearing a respirator. And I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression because the respirator doesn't block any odors. I can still fully smell the paint fumes and it's not going to protect you during painting. The only reason I'm wearing it is because it protects my face with that full face shield from the overspray coming down and raining on my face and covering me in paint. <laughs> And also the paint gun is a little noisy. It's not gonna deafen you, but it's annoying to listen to. So I use my earmuffs and it makes the job a lot more enjoyable. So that's why I'm wearing the respirator. But if you wanna block paint fumes, you're gonna need a different type of filter that actually can block odors and gases. My filter is just a particulate filter, like a dust filter, basically. Yeah, like big, bigger stuff. Now this paint is not odor free. So if anybody tries it, it does have a strong smell. I'm surprised by how strong it smells because I feel like a lot of paints from the store smell less than these. The primer smelled stronger mm -hmm. than the paint. But don't always be afraid of smells. Smells and VLCs, smells and toxic chemicals, those are two different things. Something can smell just like you can smell your dinner cooking, but it's not killing you. Yeah. So... Odor doesn't mean bad necessarily. I'm going to trust their advertising that it's a safe paint. Awesome. Right? Yeah. You see any unevenness? No, I haven't yet. I don't want to overdo anything, so I'll just leave it. Okay. We just came in from cleaning up the sprayer. That's, that's it. And look at this. Our paper did fall right when we were gone and it's against the fresh paint and I am scared to even move it. But we have to move it because if it dries to it, it's going to be even worse. Grab that side and gently pull it away. straight down in the paint. It's like really bad up here. Are you serious? Why is this day turning into such a disaster? I don't know what to do because if I, I could brush it quick and try to smooth out some of the lumps. Okay, do you see any problems? I don't know. What is this Down hand? here. Oh yeah. See how we can kind of... Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull... This is... Look at We lost paper off three sides. That one came down yeah. too? Three quarter. Did that wall get hit? Or did it all pull this way? It was all like over there. How weird. Okay, let's... Here, grab this brush. We'll just try to take this down. And like, I'm nervous because it could touch... It could touch anything. But I don't want to walk away from this room and have it fall down on its own. Well, things didn't go very smoothly today, but we still made progress. In the end, everything is looking okay. In the moment, it seemed tragic, some of the problems we were dealing with. Yeah. The door and the room, tragic. We were like, oh no, what do we do? How do we fix this? It was like you wanted to give up and walk away. But the door is drying beautifully. Now, we didn't get you a good shot of it when we were shellacking it, but... The shellac turned into a disaster. First of all, white paint was splattering out of the gun out of nowhere. 
all over the finish and I had to keep wiping it out and when you wipe a sprayed finish obviously it looks terrible. Yeah and you couldn't just leave it because then it would look really bad. Then the shellac went on so thick that it started getting very hazy and yellow and thick looking and it was disgusting. And then it, we weren't sure if that was even going to go away. And it was all uneven. We thought the door was ruined. But in being patient and letting it dry, it dried pretty nice. Yeah, all the haziness went away. So that's really good. And even the rub marks aren't that bad. Yeah. They're not very noticeable. Now I'm going to I'm showing you guys what the door looks like right now and in the direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is always going to show the most problems and defects. And you can definitely see some of those rub marks and some of the unevenness, but the door is beautiful. And I think that if we just hit it with some sandpaper and do another light coat of shellac, it's going to even out and look perfect. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Now the bedroom walls. We didn't know exactly what to expect. Overall, the spraying went good. We do have some bleed through. We only have one coat on there. And most likely the bleed through will continue onto a second coat as well. It's just the nature of spraying some wood, especially stained wood or, you know, wood that has a lot of tannins or whatever in it. Now, as far as all the scuffed paint from the tape and the paper that hit the wall, I was able to brush it out with a paintbrush. And after drying, it doesn't look bad. You barely notice it. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. So... We're going to throw a second coat on there and hopefully the room will be done. But I think the color came out really good. It's perfect. And I wish I showed you Belle's reaction. She can never give you guys like a super real reaction on camera. I think she gets a little bit nervous on yeah. camera. But she came in to take a look at the room and I was out here and I could hear her. Literally, these are her words. She walked in and she said, awesome. This is perfect. Yeah. That was her word, something like that. Awesome, this is perfect. She loved it, you could tell. Yeah. She was very excited about it. It's hard to show you guys on a camera because what the camera wants to do is try to figure, when you have a mass of one color, it doesn't know always what the color is. So when I back up out of the room and give you guys some depth, then you can really see the pink stand out. So. I'm only saying this because it's hard for you guys to judge the color, but strawberry milk, it's just a nice light pink. It's some of you are going to think it looks white. Some people are going to think it looks who knows, but it's, mm -hmm. it, it does look good in person. We're going to finish the room probably off camera, get a second coat on there. We're going to finish the door probably off camera, get some more shellac on there. And hopefully soon we'll show you guys the finished product, how it's looking. And we're going to get working on refinishing the floor. So that's the plan. That's where we're at. And everything is coming along. I'm hoping that we can get her room done, more or less, by April 1st. Yeah. I guess that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we appreciate you coming along for our disasters and our <laughs> progress. So thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. See ya. Bye.